Hello, Walter. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Pia. Yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see and you, too. <laughs> well, congratulations on the opening of Bohem. Thank it you. was a very engaging performance. Um, so I thought we would talk a little bit about how you work with the choruses, the adult chorus, the kids chorus, and how you prepare them. Uh, what is your modus operandi, pretty much? First thing I do, and I know that I'm going to do Bohem with Elan Opera, because it comes probably every five years, we just know it's coming, <laughs> in the way of its popularity, is that I look and see who did it last, and if they're still around. That is a really helpful thing to have. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're still uh, in the community of singers, and I know that they've experienced it before, and uh, have memorized it before, and so I will look through that list of the last performance, say five years ago, and say, okay, person still around. Uh, I've heard them in recent years. I know they're still uh, in the singers community and I will contact them first. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as you know, we have uh, auditions yearly uh, for new folks and I also have a larger group of singers that I might pull from. Uh, we went with 40 uh, as our total number of adults for this. And I would say probably half of them have done it with it my opera before. Okay. Just my preparation time, uh, you know, this cuts off preparation time mm -hmm. uh, in a way just having that amount of people being leaders uh, in the way of getting it back. And it's the kind of opera where if you've done it as a chorister, you, it comes back very mm -hmm. easily. Um, so from that pool, I would choose others in Atlanta and also the new folks that are, that are coming in. Okay. And we started uh, probably right after July 4th. We meet usually once a week. Um, in, in the way of preparing the shows, depending on what the show is. But for this one, we met about one. Comes out here, just to save people's time, I'll meet with the men alone, I'll meet with the women alone, because that way people don't sit around, you know, while other people learn something that has nothing to do with it. Absolutely. Uh, and, and so we'll have sectionals, and then I'll, I'll bring together uh, for the rehearsal process in the closing stages. The children are uh, about the same process. I looked to see if at least two had done a opera with uh, a done opera before, because they kind of know how it goes with the process. And we had a few. Uh, I'd say three maybe have come in as veterans of the children's chorus, and then Charles Ball, who is our children's chorus master, and I and Rolando Salazar auditions for kids in the community. We had a great outpouring of interest, and uh, as you know, chose about fifteen. Uh, and they were, what I loved is that the kids that came in, even if they didn't get in, it gave me uh, confidence in the line of singing, for sure, is that they were also well prepared. And whatever they brought, they, they were serious about the audition, and I would, I would love to sing that. There's a lot of stuff going on in a land on the suburbs. There's a lot of music events and interest. Very, very active, definitely. To sing, ready to, to, to get that part. And you could tell a lot of them did those kind of auditions. Whether or not opera or classical, they were used to kind of doing their thing. So it was, it was really nice to, to see. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, musically, yeah. because um, the ins and outs of the second act specifically, where everybody is, uh, they're I would say more challenging than like a Tedeum scene in Tosca. Uh, which is, you know, one of the great operatic uh, choruses. Um, but in Bohem, they're kind of chopped off in and out, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit everywhere. Um, so how do you work to bring everything together? Uh, someone was asking me, like, you are, what does it take to do Bohem successfully? To me, it's really math, in a way. It's musical mathematics where... Uh, you sing, and then you wait, and you sing again, and then you wait. And I really do have a kind of counting system mm -hmm. uh, that we learn it with. To me, it's about rhythm, and it's about the diction articulation. That, if you get that right in a bohem, the gene, the gene is written kind of what you need in the way of the emotions and the feelings that these little characters are given. So if you sing the notes and the rhythm and deliver the text, you are there, but you're right, you have to know when to do it. And so if, if you sing a phrase and then you have an eight bar wait, I will actually have them count out loud one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight before the next entrance. If there's a prelude that they get before they sing, I'll do some counting 
so that they can internalize the rhythm mm -hmm. and happen with what they sing and what they don't sing. And that really helps. So I don't really say, so I'll say listen to this, but I'll say, I'll say, where does it come in the way of the structure of the phrasing and the counting? And that way they're picking that, uh, that inside when they're really up on stage. And I actually do that in the warm-ups before performance. Okay. So they're engaged in the actual pulse of the scene, and you know it well, it has a pulse mm -hmm. to it. And if you don't get on that pulse and on that train, then it can be scattered, and then you don't get that really tight performance that you, that you hope to. For me, the line is either, for the chorus, it's either great or eh. <laughs> Yeah. It was. <laughs> but I'll tell you, Sunday, Sunday, Act 2 just, it, it shined on stage. It was lively. Everything came together beautifully. And as usual, the chorus sounded like a million dollars. Then, when it comes to the performance, they can put their own stuff into it around the structure. If you start with a loose structure, mm -hmm. then, then it's really, but if you, it, it's a vignette, 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 and how does it fit with, within the phrasing? But I would just sum it up as it's kind of musical mathematics. In a way, very different than most opera courses, which give the course a five minute time to shine. You know, you can't extract the chorus from the land. Mm -mm. There's, there's no kind of greatest hits chorus from the land. It's mm -hmm. just spot by spot. And I think actually at three, the beginning of that three was even the smaller vignettes of the offstage women, the offstage men, the street sweepers, the milkmaids. People tend to um, kind of take that one for granted. And to me, it's actually quite difficult because you have a 30-second thing here that's different from this 30-second thing, and if, if you want it to flow and just be as smooth as the principles, and to make that flow takes a lot of work. You can't take it for granted. Uh, I love the offstage effects in that three, and the joke makes coming in. Uh -huh. um, that's a tricky entrance. Even though it's so small, it's very, very tricky. I just, I'm, like in the warm-ups, I'll always end with the milkmaids, uh, and they have time, I'll say, okay, everybody go accept them. Because it, it's 30 seconds, but if that 30 seconds goes down, then it just loses, the audience loses the flow of the concentration, you know? And uh, so we're always working that to just make it their, their best. Well, it can be a little creepy if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, it all came together beautifully. Everything, all the all the different aspects between the chorus, the soloist, the staging, the wardrobe, uh, the details of the scenery, the colors of the balloons that gave a pop of life to the whole staging. Everything, it, it, it really worked wonderfully. So, uh, thank you, Walter. Thank you also for your now, I would say, 26 years with the Atlanta Opera. <laughs> and thank you for all the gorgeous music that you have given us during all that time. Oh, they were fantastic. I was seeing them and uh, with all the markings and everything, and they were also having a fantastic time on stage. You could tell they were so comfortable and they knew their cues, they knew what, what they were doing, um, and having fun at the same time. And I think an audience, when they see that, they tend to, they finally think, oh, this kids have to memorize all that. It, it just doesn't come easy. Look at all the Italian, look at all the entrances, look at all the rhythm, how to follow them up. It's, it's, it's tough. It's, I'll tell you, it's, it's very, very tough to pull together. It's very tough and, and they all did a fantastic job. Okay. Okay. Glad you heard it <laughs> <laughs> In Boca Lupo.